Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So hope you got a good night's rest. We are on page seven and we're on the spine, which is emotional integration and emotional release. And, you know, it's not just that, but when we look at the energetic components of what the spine does, it's tied to the central channel uh, that runs through the body. And when, when we go through and we are processing things, be it lower emotions, higher emotions, even thoughts, which thoughts and emotions are intertwined, but in a way we talk about them sometimes separately, but they, they are very intertwined. If you think something that produces an emotion, and if you feel something that produces a thought. When we do very deep, like release of something, like an old trauma or old feelings about something, um, the deepest place that it comes from is the spine. And so a lot of times uh, how energy moves in the body is dictated on how open the spine is. And you could even say the quality of the emotions are, are partially dictated on how open or how blocked up or full of blockages the spine is. And so if we wish to have um, a greater... Uh, greater activation of the heart or the ability to transmute lower emotions or painful emotions or when you know the emotions get super agitated and how quick are we able to regulate these you know part part of the issue is how blocked up is the spine and so here we're going to open up the spine it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have some big emotional release but it just helps energy flow through the body and when the time comes, you know, it's you, you have an easier ability to release motions, call things up and release them um, and not get stuck in repetition when you are looking at things from the past. Right. So with that, we're going to do this first component and we're going to open up the, the spine. So any form of cedar. Um, catrophe or rhododendron. Rhododendron is the national flower of Tibet. Or is it Nepal? I think it's Tibet. Uh, it's Nepal, I think. Anyway, I know a little fun fact that I, I have partially in my head. <laughs> Um, and then the spine blend or stagnation blend. And in your kit, if you bought the kit, is stagnation. Yeah. So before we get rolling, check in with yourself. Notice how you feel, your body, your emotions, your mind. How do you feel about life right now, about your world? <clears throat> There was a batch of caps that did that. Okay, so you have your oil, and let's begin inhaling. Your awareness is on your brain. You're inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
And now go to your spine. You're inhaling with your awareness on the spine. And as you inhale on the spine, do your best to try to relax the spine. Why don't you just pause for a moment and just be still. Begin inhaling again. Your awareness is on the brain and the spine at the same time. Just pause and let go for a moment.
Begin inhaling your awareness as your brain and the soles of your feet. As you inhale, draw, draw energy up. As you exhale, let go or push energy out the best that you can. And then pause and be still. Again, your brain. Your awareness is on your brain. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Your awareness is on the spine. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Try to keep your awareness on the whole spine.
Your awareness is on the brain and the spine at the same time. Awareness is on the brain and the spine at the same time. Your awareness is on the brain and the soles of your feet at the same time. If you can, inhale, drawing energy in. Exhale, releasing down into the earth. Just pause and be still. Just be still. Now let's do the quadrants of the aura. Right? So we're going to start with the left side of the body, head to toe, left side of your face and neck, 
your left shoulder and ribs, your hip, down the outer part of the leg, and the left outer ankle. Your awareness is on that whole area. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Move to the front side of the body, your face and throat, chest, abdomen, pelvis, down the fronts of the legs, all the way to the tops of your feet. The right side of your body, face and throat, the right side of uh, your right shoulder, your right ribs, the hip, down the outer leg, all the way to the right ankle.
and then move to the back side of your body. The back of your head and neck, down your whole back, your hips, your legs, the back of your legs, all the way down to your heels. And then pause and be still. Just close your eyes and be still. Just be still. Again. Begin inhaling, your awareness is on the left side of your body, head to toe. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
the front side of the body. Down the whole front side, head to toe. Your awareness is on the whole front side of the body, head to toe. the right side of the body. Head to toe on the right side.
Your awareness is on the right side of the body, down the whole right side. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. the back side of the body. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths, head to toe. Back of your head and neck, your whole back, your hips, down the back of your legs. And then just pause, just pause, pause and let go.
eight, we're going to do the application C. So the very first thing is you're going to think of a person, somebody in your family, somebody you interact with, a friend, somebody at work. Somebody who you have a lot of interaction with. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And pause and let go. And again, could be the same person, could be a different person.
Breathe in, just let go. Okay, now we're going to do an active situation. It just means things going on in your life. Some project, some group you're interacting with, some task that you're doing, whatever it might be. Your awareness is on that active situation and you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then pause and let go. No, again, another active situation or the same one, doesn't matter. And inhale.
and just being still. Just let everything go. Just be still. Now, past events. Your awareness is on past events. Like just some event in your past. Something that was impactful in a negative way or a positive way. doesn't matter. Long, slow, deep breaths. And then be still, just let it go. Again, either the same past event or a different one. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. doesn't necessarily mean that it's
and then just pause and let go. Okay, so now you're going to pull out hyssop, some form of hyssop. Oh, yeah. Chocolate root cleanser and hyssop supreme, too. So your awareness is across the whole base of your skull, like side to side, all the way side to side on the back side, the base of your skull. Let that go and still at the base of your skull, but right in the center, right where that little indention is, when you poke around the base of your skull, your awareness is there. And now your awareness is on the back heart, which is the area between your shoulder blades and the top of your head, both at the same time. Back heart and your crown at the same time.
pause and let go. Again, the bottom of your skull, 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 side to side. The bottom of your skull, side to side. Then go to right in the center, that medulla area, right at the base of your skull, right in the center. And then the back heart and the crown at the same time, the area between your shoulder blades and the crown both at the same time.
You're pausing and being still. Just be still. You're using the same oil. Your awareness is on the back heart, the area between the shoulder blades. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Your awareness is on the navel. And the crown, the top of your head. Just be still. 
Pause and be still. And again, the back heart, the area between your shoulder blades. Your awareness is on the navel. Awareness is on the crown, nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
Your awareness is on the crown. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Pause and let go. Notice how you feel, your body, your emotions, your mind, your thoughts. Okay, hey, let's go ahead and share experiences, ask questions. You can unmute yourself, type in. Go ahead, Laura. Hey, Laura. Hi, Greg. <clears throat> I feel um, uh, real still and I spaced out a lot. Um, it, it it felt really good. Good. Um, I have a I have a few just real basic questions. Sure. Um, uh, on the first one, I'm a um, would any of the cedars do, and yeah. I assume maybe the stagnation and all yeah. are the best? Yeah. Okay. Any of them would work. Yeah. Okay. When you're dealing directly on the spine mm -hmm. to, um, to, to cleanse the spine, uh, can you, can you put it on the spine? Does that make any difference? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You could do that as well. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, and, um, when you have us doing the chakra chakra breathing with the up and down, uh -huh. how is that different from when we do the same thing using white light and gray light? Great, great. It's a, variation. It's, it's a variation of it. Like you're you're just kind of drawing. Um, the oil is doing the work. Where when you're not using the oil, you would visualize white coming in, and you would release the dirty gray. Okay. The oil is doing that for you. So you don't have to do that extra level of visualization. But if visualization helps, you can do it? Sure, if it works for you. Yeah. Okay. And um, actually, that may have been it. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. And go ahead, Teresa. Hey, Miss Teresa. Hi. Um. Wow, I think I lost 10,000 pounds for the <laughs> right. death and grief. It just came out. Yeah. So uh, I'm feeling pretty relaxed. And last night I also had a release around the solar plexus web. Oh, good. Um, and I caught my body trying to hold on to it and going back into the old story. And I'm like, nope, we're done right. with that. Yeah. Um, it was pretty surreal, but this morning, um, uh, amazing. And I'm wondering like the, the stagnation and the mm -hmm. spine work, how often could I do that? Cause I'm sure there's more you could, there. You could do it kind of often. Like you could, I, I mean, 
you you could do it daily. You probably like you, you know at first you might feel like I'm going to do this daily, but then like you know when it kind of settles, you you probably find yourself doing it. Like if you're really enthusiastic about it, like maybe two or three times a week. If, okay. you, if you felt the drive to do it more, it it would be okay. Um, yeah. But but you know, like even if it's every once in a while. Uh, I, you know, I don't do a long version of this uh, every day, but um, from time to time I do do this long version. But every day I kind of go through and, you know, how you just that first little piece where you go brain, spine, brain, spine, brain. Yep. Um, I, I do that every day. OK. All right. You know, um, I, don't, I, I, I don't even do a super long version of it. Like, you know, it might take five minutes or something. And so, you know, it's usually at the end of the day when I do it, or if, um, if I had like really intense dreams, or if I wake up feeling a little, you know, sometimes your dreams are so intense, you wake up feeling a little altered and, yep. you know, you're, you're awake for five minutes and you kind of snap out of it. But like, if I feel that happening, it, it usually means that you like are processing or releasing something. And so, um, then I do it in the morning. Like I'll just do it right off the bat and just whatever's there, just flesh it out and then just okay. go on my day. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm curious about something in the <laughs> last one with Hissa. I got this visualization when we were doing navel to mm -hmm. also connect the navel to the back part. Mm hmm and doing that, um, like I saw a line going through my, mm -hmm. my back heart. I don't know, is there an energy channel there? Well, the heart and the navel at some point begin to mix, like they'll, they'll start to mix together. And um, d different chakras will mix and heart and navel are definitely uh, two of the things that will mix at some point. So it's almost like a kind of alchemy of sorts when those two mix. And so that's probably what you're picking up on. And what's the significance of the alchemy? Uh, uh, awareness and sensitivity. Yeah. For, for that okay. particular one. Yeah. And is that awareness and sensitivity to me, to the environment or just to everything? Uh, everything. Like, you okay. know, like an inner awareness and outer awareness. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we're always striving to have like greater levels of awareness for, you know, our higher faculties, our, our soul, mm -hmm. our Buddha nature, you know, our true nature, whatever you want to call, call it. Mm -hmm. But um, also like a, a level of awareness to things in the environment, which helps you to uh, navigate um the good situations, the bad situations. And as, as one begins to um, become more aware of your nature, you know, I, I say Buddha nature or soul, depending on just what tradition you're from, you know, we're really talking about the same thing, but different, different people call the same thing by different names. And, and so, um, it, it helps it helps you be like in the right place at the right time like you know avoiding things that could be potentially harmful um being in places where there is maybe an opportunity for growth or you know you know what i mean like it's um yep. It's it's a manifestation of synchronicity is actually like as I'm going down the rabbit hole, I was trying not to say it, but like why? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's basically a manifestation of synchronicity. And you yeah. know, like there there's 14 different aspects of intuition. And you know, intuition isn't just like, oh, you, you know, I've said this a bunch, but yeah, it's not just like, oh, I have insight, but it's it's like how to navigate the world, how to be in the right place at the right time, how to process deeper levels of information. It's basically how we interact with the outer world. Mm -hmm. And really what what um we're talking about is a lot of what we call suffering 
is what we've aligned with. And the, the problem is we haven't aligned like consciously, like it's usually conditioning and the way we're raised and maybe some education or, you know, you're in some yeah. bad experiences and, and then we align with certain things. And then that's the thing that we seek out. That's the thing that we stay connected with. And so that idea of, um, aligning with more of our true nature, our soul, our Buddha nature, whatever that might be, higher faculties, you you then begin to harness this idea of being able to put yourself in the right place at the right time or pull yourself out of a situation before it becomes traumatic or harmful or, you know, like entangling. And so, um, you know, active imagination would be another one. I mean, it's kind of what we're talking about in the, the class next weekend with the intuition and healing the past is is really how to better align with who you truly are rather than what the world has done to you you know that's basically what it is and and a lot of times it, we're we're not necessarily choosing like uh like the patterns of suffering they kind of happened and we just haven't been able to pull out of it you know you know what i mean like there's those situations have a kind of a gravity, but like gra gravity is a one way of saying it, but it's, it's more that we just kind of align ourselves with it and we don't really break out of it um, until something comes to a head, you, you know, but as you, as you refine these intuitive faculties, you just kind of look around and you go, I'm done with this. I'm sick of this. I'm not doing it anymore. Like you don't have to have something come to a head. It, it's a way to end suffering or to at least diminish suffering. But, you know, um, uh, it's a tough one for the intellect to like grab onto because the intellect is like, but this is what we do. This is, we just, we don't have the right piece of information or, you know, we, you, you know, whatever it is. Like, you, you know, I still catch all these years. I still catch my mind doing it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I catch my mind doing it often, mm -hmm. you know? and, and um, th those intuitive aspects are are tied to like alchemies in the body, yeah. like mixing of certain energies. At first, it, it's just two two chakras will begin to mix, and then at some point. A combination of maybe two or even three chakras begin to mix and mm -hmm. what it is is you're you're moving out of the drives of the lower nature and you're really making the vehicle you're tempering the vehicle the emotional body the mental body to be a vehicle of the soul or of your true nature rather than the byproduct of the things that have happened you know the conditioning the the impact of the collective unconscious and and all those things and so you know um that's a tough one because it's it's um it's tough but it's not it's tough because the intellect uh cousin kind of doesn't buy into all of that you know yeah. like like you kind of have to like have the experiences and keep going back to to letting it have the experiences. And then eventually it's like, okay, yeah, we could do this. Like it reaches like a tipping point. But, um, you know, that's why like all the work with like the aura, the auric programming is um, to diminish the impact of all the conditioning so that it yep. becomes easier to mm -hmm. let go. I'm tired of all this suffering. I'm tired of this repetition. I'm tired of, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> and breaking away. And so, you know, at first I was the the class next weekend, I was trying to figure out how to do the work programming and then the class next weekend in the same weekend. And I was just like, it's it's too it's too much. Like there's no way I can do it. Yeah. So so we're we're doing next weekend and then in about a month we're gonna do the two classes as a study group together. Okay. And I can well. I'm even if I just give you guys a booklet, you'll you'll see how to do it. 
But I still thought it would be fun to take a day or two and and like on a weekend and just do those two classes together. But sure. it's, it's I, I'm super. Uh, I'm excited slash blown away that we're even that we got to the org programming and that we're doing the intuition next weekend. Uh, <laughs> the 14 aspects of intuition. Never in a million years did I think I'd be talking about these things. Without the pandemic, I don't know that I would have. Like honestly. Well, there you like go. It, it's it's uh, kind of mind-boggling how something can suck so bad and also have some beauty in it as well. Yeah. But that's the nature of life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, as you were talking, I just got this, you know, I was wondering in my mind, like, what should I do to continue to prepare my body for even next weekend? And mm -hmm. I, Violet Healer mm -hmm. popped up. Is that something that you can take internally as well? Violet Healer, um, it, I don't know there'd be a big benefit. I mean, a, a drop of it might might be fine i mean it has a couple absolutes in it and so absolutes aren't always the best to take take sure. in um but um definitely topically and um uh, like an inhalation um, okay I, I you know the thing that i like uh the violet healer for that i i always get them like I get a lot out of it inhaling, but like when I do a salt bath or like a body tonic with it, like it's just, it just makes my body melt. And so um, I would say maybe try like that version, even a little bit neat, like put a few drops on and just rub it on the shoulders and neck, you know, especially like up in here, like yeah. you have a lot of nerves up here that are um, like affect like blood pressure and stuff. And yeah. so it is it's not so much about the blood pressure part but it's it's very like stabilizing and toning to the the balance of the body like the homeostasis of the body it's it's very very soothing and so like okay. some some form of that yeah i okay. mean that's great preparation for that but okay. yeah we're definitely doing some alchemies next weekend yeah. okay perfect thank you very much greg you're so and then go ahead, Dan, then Kat. Hey, Dan. Hey, Greg. Um, well, this, 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 uh, what you were ta just talking about with Teresa, this is like, that's way cool because I was just, that was part of my practice this morning is to kind of look for the path as far as continuing the path of my spiritual development. And this mm -hmm. is kind of what comes out of that. It's, it's kind of interesting to, to just have this kind of, kind of flow with that, you know? It's like yeah. very, uh, I was asking for, you know, kind of to, to uh, be closer to, to get closer to the Buddha nature and that sort of thing. Oh, so, tremendous. Yeah, yeah, that was. I love that verbiage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, so, you know, like I'm talking about how we're going to do the intuition and the healing the past, which is um, developing those 14 aspects of intuition, which is also a setup for the beginning of June, we're doing, um, there's these rhythms in the body that I, I haven't really talked about them yet, but it's the development and the working of the seven rays, the seven soul rays. Oh, yeah. I've and so that, that is yeah. like even like the continuation, like we're, we're going from the form in the body to here we're doing like the emotional, mental, like the psyche component of it and then the 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 soul rays which is how we emanate the light and so it's right in tune with what you're talking about right oh. into it. it's like exactly what that is oh perfect so like i you know we were talking about like samantha's been asking for years like do a class on the soul rays and i was like oh we don't have the foundation yet and soon soon as we started doing the program they were programming and then when we did the the, even the flyer for the intuition and the uh, healing the past i was like guess what's coming next <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so but cool. like uh i mean it 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 i don't even know how to put it to words it it, it just It changes things and brings in a kind of beauty that you just, 
human experience doesn't really touch it. You know? Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, look forward. Looking forward. This this last exercise we did, or last uh, set of protocols, mm -hmm. it was like there was definitely a feeling of a re release, if mm -hmm. not some sort of relief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I well. would say both. Yeah, I would say yeah. totally yeah, both. It definitely yeah, definitely got a breath of fresh air thing. So, yeah. and, and the thing that I like about it, it's a release without going, Ugh, that thing that happened so many years ago. Oh, I'm so upset. It's just like, yeah, bye. Exactly. Like, it's, yes. A great expression for it. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's very yeah. nice. Uh, I, I think there's a time and a place for like wrestling with something for a little bit, but there comes a point where you're just like, I just need to walk away from it i just need to move past it i just you know just gotta it's gotta just, let it go like you know what time. i mean and it's, it's just time right yes too the, much the thing is it's the the letting go is um rarely is it our our psyche it's it's usually not mental or emotional it's usually the body is holding on to it like it just like you know teresa keep saying like the body wants to hold on to something it's yeah. it's usually literally that it's the physiology just doesn't want to let go of or, or it's stuck somewhere yeah. Or something like yeah. That. Yeah. 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 yeah 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 there was a uh, for the breathing the charcoal breathing through the mm -hmm. feet mm -hmm. is that you're also breathing up from the feet and then yeah down. you're kind of like the best way to do it like say this is my foot you're moving your awareness up and then you're just letting the awareness like go down into the earth. Okay. So you're coming like up and you're you're just getting used to the chakra like absorbing more. You're like, you know, because even the minor chakras, they're constantly going like this, right? Oh. They constantly go like this. And so what chakra breathing does is at some point when the chakra becomes more developed, it's still going like this, but it starts going like this. Right? Oh, okay. And so you're you're kind of manually kind of training the chakra to go. And even like with what Teresa said is like she was feeling the heart and the navel, like there was a line connecting. And uh -huh. so part of what happens is she's seeing the, the like the other side of the coin. It's funny that you two are saying the two two, two things together. The 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 energy centers will begin to mix, and as they begin to mix the chakra starts doing this oh that's when it starts to yeah do it. and so you know she's feeling the line and you're you're feeling the yeah the pumping but th but they both go hand in hand and you can do it either way like you oh. can you can train the chakra to pump or you can oh. mix chakras and either way it does like they both do it so it doesn't okay. matter like if one works better for you yeah do that one Okay. But we, 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 because there's even other ways of, um, like mixing, mixing them, but, um, uh, manually doing it that way or manually mixing them, like how she's, she said, like, oh, I feel the navel and the back heart at the same time. You know, it's the idea of the heart and the crown, like when you're doing a blessing or a meditation, you're mixing the two. And right. so when that happens, it starts to uh, like pump. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that actually brings me down a little bit of a rabbit hole. One thing that yeah. I've kind of started feeling is like working from like a, from a toroidal kind of processing, like going in from the crowd, you know, a toroid, right? The kind of thing that it mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of bring that and circulate that through the body and stuff. So are Chakras kind of like that sort of. So say that again. Say that again. Oh no! From a toroidal experience, I mean, just uh, they're like energy. The way energy moves from uh, the inside of something and out, kind of thing. So just doing that kind of practice. Oh yeah, and and then you're talking about and then circulating it. it start, yeah, circulating. Yeah, it, sure, you like, can do that. It, it might be a little intense at first. But yeah, you okay. could totally do that. Yeah, you totally could do that. Yeah. Um, one more thing. Oh yeah, throughout this this last part of the exercise with the um, uh, 
the aura uh, and the people, active situations and stuff, it was actually a solution that came to mind for one of the things that I was working on. Oh, work. good. So that was kind of like, oh, yeah, we could try that. Let's try that. <laughs> Very kind nice. Of, perfect. And one more point, <laughs> too, was like, um, uh, this also brought me back to the perspective of uh, being able to see the mind, have the perspective come out here when the mind's doing this, you know, kind of being out mm -hmm. here and seeing the whole thing kind of, you know, the difference between the observer versus the activity oh, nice. of, of, yeah. the, of the thing that's of the mind blah, 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 or, da, 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 or whatever it kind of goes through, right? So it's kind right. of just kind of reinforced that kind of perspective for me too. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. So, um, sorry, Kat, we got to jump over to the oh, Sunday yeah, session. Yeah. And, um, but we'll pick up uh, Kat right where we left off right after lunch. So um, we're ju jumping to the Sunday session. Join us if you can. Um, uh, Samantha's putting the link on. We're going to do, you know, how we do. Uh, we're going to do a little aura cleansing, purifying thing. And then um, we'll be back at 1.30 to pick up where we left off. So, hey everybody, let's come on back. Okay, and I think we were still doing a little bit of Q&A before we jump into the next thing and Miss Cat. Hi. I hey. just want to also say for everybody, hello. I kind of introduced myself a little bit yesterday, but I realized I could also say, you know, if you like hear from me responding, asking questions about your orders or anything like that, this is the one. It's me. Yes. Anyway, um, nice to be here with you all. So my question is, so during the I don't remember what you called it, but like the auric quadrants. Yes. We're on the spine, that last thing we just did. Yeah. Yes. But like specifically at the part where it was like left side, front, mm -hmm. like that. Um, the first, the, the counterclockwise one, I didn't particularly feel anything or anything, but with the clockwise one, it was as if I could see in my mind like <clears throat> rays coming out from my oh, nice. or my body yeah, yeah 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 and it seemed like they were getting like thicker and more condensed and bigger right is that um oh what was i gonna ask okay so with the counterclockwise direction you said it was like clearing yeah like so but on the one that we just did this morning we just did clockwise both directions and and so um, okay. the one yesterday we went counterclockwise and then clockwise, and so I threw threw everybody a little bit of a curveball, even though we did that one twice. Um, uh, but the the thing that made the second the second type around stronger is when you do that um, basic spleen Ming Min crown, that also has um, a very strong. Um, uh, like clearing or cleansing effect on the aura and so it's a different a different way it, it's very similar to the counterclockwise thing um, it's just uh, like a different way of getting there and um, then when you go back and you do that second time around it does make it different like it, it, it makes it a bit different and so you know your your you're cleaning up the aura, but when you add that part, it goes much deeper. And so the aura becomes a lot more vibrant at that point. And so check you out, checking out. I mean, you're seeing the health rays, like that's exactly what you're seeing. And they will increase in diameter and they'll get much stronger and much brighter. Um, and then it accelerates healing in the body. Um, it's very relaxing to the body, but it also will stimulate like detoxification in the body, you know, uh, not just energetic detoxification, but also like the organs of blood purification, but they're very, that is very stimulating to lymphatic movement. And if you look at a lot of times when 
lymph is stagnant, the health rays are not very vibrant. Like it, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost like it's the energetic counterpart to lymphatic function. And um, uh, the thing that's nice about that is, you know, you go through and you do it and it feels really nice and feels very blissful. And part of the peace comes from the displacement of the lower vibrational energy in the body. Some, some of it is, is, you know, physical blockages and it can be a little bit of like lower emotions and things, but it's also, it's just kicking off like lower vibrational, like elements, you know, the elementals. And um, it, it really helps refine the body. Like it, meditation will throw off lower vibrational energy, but sometimes it gets stuck. And when the health rays are open like that, it throws off the conditioning of the past. And that's why it's also associated with when you see the, the health rays expanding like that, it is also like the energetic, uh, mm, well, I don't know how to say it. Like, uh, it's a reflection of the potential of being able to overcome obstacles. Like you're, you're seeing the movement of energy in the body literally by seeing those health rays like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, you answered the question that I didn't ask, but I'm wondering, uh, no, it's gone. I had a different question. Though. <laughs> um. <laughs> it also removes thoughts from your head. And, um... <laughs> I noticed that actually, no, it came back to me. So during it's during uh, the lunch break, I was cooking mm -hmm. and two things happened that would normally, I know burn me and I didn't get burned. It was weird. Like I had yeah. hot oil splash yeah. in my face, didn't right. hurt. And then I touched the hot iron pan right. accidentally and it didn't hurt. And I thought there must be a connection because normally that would burn me. Yeah, I, I would say your your ability to heal is enhanced, but the, um, the reactivity of the body becomes much more regulated with lymphatic function. You know, because a lot of times... I mean, you bring up a very good point. Like a lot of times we think like, oh, a burn's a burn or a bump is a bump, right? But when the body is healthier, like healthier meaning the health rays are, are, are more activated and more importantly, even lymphatic function is, is going very, you know, it's moving, it's strong. Your, your, your body becomes less reactive, right? And so... Whenever lymphatic movement is, is stagnant, the sensory nerves become um, like overactivated or hyperreactive. Like they'll fire, you know, up to 10, 15, even 20 times more than normal. And so something that could be a little, little bump when those nerves are super overactivated becomes a, a worse injury. But like if the body is calm, something that would injure most people is like, eh, you know, and so that, I mean, that's not surprising. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my other question was, when we have our awareness on a person or a situation, is that person or situation being directly influenced or indirectly through us being influenced by that process? Uh, both. Like um, both is happening, you know, you're shifting. And so that's affecting that other person. But that other person is also, you know, because we're connected. And so um, it, it, it could be positive, positive people where you have positive interactions. But even with people who are negative, your shifting is affecting them, but you're also shifting them to affect your shift, if that makes sense. You know, because energy is constantly bouncing back and forth. And so it, it actually goes both ways. Nice. Thanks, yeah. Greg. You're so welcome. Plus, plus you're kind of targeting, like in a way, you're you're almost like manually, you're manually making your energy body and the intuitive part like expand, right? You know, because the thing is the intellect is the part that keeps the energy body from expanding. So when you go, okay, person, uh, active situation, uh, it's like you're manually going, okay expand a little bit and then it might snap back a little bit but not as much and then you go okay other people 
other things, the past, like you, you kind of keep manually opening that up so that your energy body kind of keeps expanding. And so that too, you're, you're being impacted, but it's also impacting the people around you, even if it wasn't a person that you actually focused on. Like as your energy body expands and changes, the people in your periphery, even though you might not have put your attention on them, they're impacted because your energy body is changing. You know, because we all we all get um, uh, impacted by like the examples around us. And so as you shift and change, it makes other people around you shift and change. Nice. Yeah. And let me check and see if we've had any in chat. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, that was a great session too, by the way. With the uh... so we we've gone through and we've done what we do. We did uh, protective webs. We've done health rates. We did the aura. We did the spine. This is a little bit different order than we did in the first version of this class. And we're going a little bit deeper in this class. So, um, you know, I think you can tell with with the conversations. But, you, you know, given that we're doing the intuition class next week, and I wanted to do a little bit deeper dive into preparing the energy body mm -hmm. for for um, going into deeper states of intuition as we start to develop those 14 aspects. And here we're gonna do it with the etheric cords. And so here we're, we're wanting to stimulate parasympathetic activity, which is our ability to disconnect from negative connections. And then um, we're gonna use mm, the either etheric cords or iron bark eucalyptus um, to go through and then work the cords. So right off the bat, if you have marjoram or rue, marjoram or rue, if you need a substitute, let us know, but. And marjoram's the one in the kit. Yeah. Marjoram is a workhorse. Okay, we're good. Hey, everybody. So the very first thing you're going to do is body awareness. Now, again, you're not putting your awareness on like a compromised area of your body. You're actually trying to tap into just wherever you feel something in your body. You know, uh, you might feel a heaviness or a denseness in the chest and the legs Sometimes, like when we're working stuff like this, I'll fill it in my hamstrings. It's not necessarily going to be a place where you go, oh, I have a bad shoulder. Let me work the bad shoulder. You're trying to be aware of your body because your, your body is being impacted with interactions from the environment. But here we're working cords. You want to be aware of what you can feel as we go through and let go of these cords. So you're cultivating a different kind of intuition or inner awareness. You're not just going to your hot spots, right? So your awareness is on your body and then start taking long, slow, deep breaths.
and then pause and be still. Pause and be still. And then again, check in with your body before you start inhaling. Where do you feel it in your body? You're inhaling, you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then pause and be still. Just pause and be still. And now let's do brain awareness. So your awareness is on your brain. If you can find areas where it feels dense or heavy or there feels like there's something up, focus on that. If not, your awareness is just on your whole brain. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
and then pause and be still. And then again, your awareness is on the brain. Nice, long, slow, deep breath. And then just pause. Now, your awareness is on the jaw, the jaw minors, where they hinge right here in front of the ear. Nice, long, slow, deep breath. And then pause and be still. And then again, 
on your jaws, the jaw miners, where the jaw hinges in front of the ear. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Then pause. Let's go to the knees, the back of the knee. Nice, long, slow, deep breath. And then pause. And then again, the back of the knees. Nice, long, slow, deep breath.
and then pause. Now the ankles, your awareness is on your ankles. Nice, long, slow, deep breath. And then pause. Ankles again, nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
Just be still. Now the soles of your feet. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the soles of the feet. Just pause and be still.
Your awareness is on the soles of your feet. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then pause and be still. We're going to take out either a etheric cords, iron bark eucalyptus, or again, rue. If you don't have one of those, we'll try to come up with a sub for you, but those are your, your eight choices. So let's think of somebody in in your periphery, somebody that so so we're we're disconnecting potential negative cords, but we also have cords that are positive between us and the people around us, especially people that we're close to and but they can get contaminated. And it's not necessarily because of what's going on between the two of you, but say like a husband and wife, you know, one of them's out working, one of them's at home. The one working has a bunch of stress, comes home, their interaction, that stress starts to bounce back and forth between them. So it affects them both, right? So it could even be positive people that uh, is around you or um, somebody you have an issue with. So I would say just pick a person around you and we're going to do several of them. We're going to do at least maybe two or three. So pick a person and just think of the person as you inhale the oil, as you think of the person. And then pause and be still. Let's work that same person again. So think of that person as you take long, slow, deep breaths.
and then pause. Notice how you're feeling, your body, your emotions, your thoughts. Let's think of a different person. As you think of this other person, begin to inhale. And then pause. And then again, that same person, long, slow, deep breaths. And then pause. Let's pick another person, somebody that's somebody you interact with or is in your periphery somewhere. And then again, think of them as you inhale.
On aime pas. And then that person one more time. And then just pause. Now, active situation. So this could be, you know, work, some project, a relationship, you know, something where you are interacting or doing something. It's not so much about the person, it's about the situation. We can have cords to these situations just like we would a person. It could be good or bad. It doesn't have to be a necessarily a negative situation. This deepens the connection to that situation, or if there's negativity, diminishes it and helps you to either shift or, you know, detach and walk away, whatever you need to do. So you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Nice, long, slow, deep breath.
and then just pause. Again, active situation could be the same one or it could be a different one. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then just be still. Now we're going to past events. Could be a negative one a positive one, but just some, some impactful event that's in the past. Just pause. Either the same past event or a different past event. 
Start taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then just pause. Let's do that one one more time. Either the same past situation or a new one. Think of the situation as you inhale the oil. And then just be still. Now, world events, something in the news, something in the world going on that maybe st stirs you a little bit. You know, you have plenty to choose from. But, you know, just pick something and then start inhaling.
and then pause. Let's just let all of that go now. Just be still, you can set the bottle down. Notice your body, how you feel, your thoughts. How about this? We'll take a little break and we'll come back and we'll do a little share. So come back straight up on the hour. Hey, everybody, let's come on back. Let's go ahead and share experiences and ask questions. Unmute yourself or type in. Go ahead and fire away. <laughs> okay, we'll just move on. Okay, and go ahead, Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Didn't want you to feel lonely. That was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> That was really, really great. Um, and I, I have a, a request um, because sure. Lucy will be departing um, tomorrow to her new home. Mm -hmm. um, would it be possible for you to do a blessing for her? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be glad to. That would be great. Do you need me to yeah. send you a photo? Um, no, I, I can, I've i seen her, so I, I, I can tap into that. Yeah. <laughs> She's enjoying your class, too. So oh, I've, good. Uh, I've uh, surrogated a little bit, so she's got... A lot, a lot of nice energies around her. So she says, thank you, Greg, for supporting. <laughs> My pleasure. So how, how long did you end up having her before I, you found her out? Well, she's going to an interim place to continue her development on her reactivity um, mm -hmm. and her final home. Uh, I've had her six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the she's got, well, no, no surprise, right? A lot of trauma and right. reactivity and she needs a environment that has less people around her now yeah, yeah. so uh, she's going to go with somebody who's skilled in reactivity and has their own home on a piece of property so oh great I have, I have a feeling that this will be interesting how it turns out but uh, yeah. you know who knows maybe she'll be a failure there but they already have a, a family in mind so she's well oh, on her good. Well, on her way, but you know, good, good, good. any additional, you know, yeah, be good too. Yeah, angelic sure. blessings are always uh, appreciated and Buddhist ones too, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Greg. You're so welcome. And go ahead, Lolly. Hey, Miss Lolly. Hello. Um, so I actually have a question about the one we did earlier about the spine. Okay. Because um, there were a lot of different pieces with that. So the one about sure. the vagus nerve, uh, when you do like the bottom of the skull, the medulla. Mm -hmm. And so is that something that you would do? Like you can do it obviously as a standalone thing. But would you oh, do totally. it like more often? You could do that one daily. To... Yeah, you could totally do that daily. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so and actually so... like the thing with hyssop, Hyssop kind of stimulates that area, even when you just inhale it without directing the energy there. And, and so directing oh. it is even, you know, more potent, but like when you work with hyssop, part of what hyssop does is it stimulates the, the medulla. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. But then, but if you were to do that with like the three, like the bottom of the skull and then the medulla and then, so would you do hyssop or would you do the CRC? Oh, you can do either one. Like, they, they, um, in that area, they do almost identical. Yeah, and, and okay. so, um, uh, and they both will reduce the tendency to absorb negativity either from people or from environments. So the like in that area, they are almost identical. Yeah, I mean, in other areas, they're, they're a bit different, but in that area, they're almost identical. Yeah. Okay. And it's good to know that the hyssop would do it regardless, even if I'm not yeah. putting the attention yeah. there. And okay. the same with the chocolate okay. root cleanser. Like even the chocolate root cleanser hits that spot. 
Oh, it would still, okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And then um, something you said yesterday, um, you were talking about the kidneys and um, myrrh, that myrrh can, um, what As was it, like, uh, if you work on the kidneys, mm -hmm. right. So then um, would it be just by itself or could it work as a blend as well? Like Actually, for that, it needs to, be, like... needs to be by itself. Yeah. By itself. In, in a blend, okay. I might do it a little bit. But the thing with blends is the, the oils, they'll become like a new substance and they don't always yeah. retain what they did before. I mean, they do to a certain mm -hmm. extent, but not like when they do things on their own. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's what I yeah. thought, but I was like, let's just double check. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, so let's hit page 10. We're going to do number six, and this is the limbs. And, you know, the limbs are very interesting. Like our ability to be present depends on how how decongested our limbs are the limbs the arms and the legs and the well the arms and the legs um are extensions of the basic chakra so when it's congested it's harder for the basic chakra to function properly but it's also harder for us to be present we tend to be more reactive we we tend to have more automatic behavior and automatic thinking we don't necessarily process things cognitively now, this is also recognized in Chinese medicine and in um, even in osteopathic medicine, like when somebody has a tendency to check out a lot and have a hard time being present, one of the things you do is you manipulate the arms and the legs. And so Chinese medicine, they would go through and they would treat the arms and legs as well. And part, part of doing this also helps to enhance, improve your immune system, your immune function. But it also increases the potential for you to transmute lower emotions into higher emotions. And so this is a good thing to do on a regular basis. You know, like some people have been asking, can I do this on a regular basis? Um, this would be another one that you could do on a daily basis if you chose. Um, we've done it in different ways. You know, sometimes we target different things with, with the arms and the legs. Here we're opening up the... Um, on the channels of the arms and legs, but we also do things where we increase circulation to the arms and legs because when the circulation is off in the arms and legs, it throws off the circulation to the brain. And so this one I always find very like interesting, very soothing and makes you relax, but clear, you know? Sometimes you feel relaxed and like, oh, I could take off. This one, like I feel usually relaxed, but like, Okay, throw, throw me a thing and I'll, you know, might take me a minute to get up, but once I do, I can get up and do it. Where some of these processes are like, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> you know, so here we're looking at some form of mugwort. Artemisia, mugwort, mugwort supreme. I think we're good. So we're gonna start with your navel. Your awareness is on the navel. You're taking long, slow, deep breaths. And then an inch and a half below your navel. So go an inch and a half below your navel. Take some nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
and then your armpits. Your awareness is on your armpits. And then your elbows, the crease of your elbows. Your wrists, your awareness is on the wrist. The palms of your hands. And then arm awareness. So you're just aware of your whole arm. From the armpits down to the fingertips. And then just be still for a moment. Just let it go.
your hips, the sides of your hips. Take a nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Awareness on the sides of your hips. The knees, the back of your knees. The ankles, your awareness is on the ankles. the soles of the feet. And then leg awareness. Let's try that. And then pause and let go. Just pause, completely let go. Interesting, huh? Oh. Same oil, your navel. You're inhaling on your navel.
and then an inch and a half below your navel. Just let go, let go for a moment. Your awareness is on the armpits. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. The elbows. The wrists, your awareness is on the wrist. The palms of your hands.
and then just be still. Now practice arm awareness, your whole arms. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then pause and let go. Your hips, the sides of your hips. The knees, the back of the knees. The ankles. Soles of the feet. Awareness is on the soles of the feet. And then pause and let go. Just let go. Now leg awareness from your hips down to your feet, long, slow, deep breath. And then pause. So now you're going to grab one of these other oils. In the purchase kit, you have Fur Supreme, 
but also a blend is Aegis, but Spikenard, Siberian fir, vetiver, valerian, ruscous, which is a fancy vetiver. I mean, vetiver is already fancy, but it's a fancy vetiver. And then uh, galvanum. Okay, we're good. Okay, your awareness is on the sex chakra, where the sex organs are. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. You're on the sex chakra, you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Move your awareness to the front solar, that area below your ribs on the upper abdomen. And then the brain, your awareness is on the brain. Your awareness is on the brain.
Now your awareness is on the sex, the solar, and the brain, all three at the same time. And try to balance it out. A third of your awareness on the sex chakra, a third on the solar, a third on the brain. Just let it go. Just let it all go. Just be still. Again, your awareness is on the sex chakra. Taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Your front solar.
the brain. Your awareness is on the brain. Now the sex, the solar, and the brain, all three at the same time. And then just pause and be still. Notice how you feel your body, your emotions, your thoughts. There you go. So how about this? We'll let this soak in and you can rest, take a nap or stretch and get a snack. And we'll come back at five after the hour and we'll share experiences and then jump into more. So they're both pretty, pretty light. So, so I'll see you in just a little bit. Hey, everybody, let's come on back. And let's go ahead and share experiences or ask questions. And there you go. Go ahead, Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Greg. Um, that was really very, trying to think of the word, soothing. A lot of stuff came up, but it was pretty, um, observatory versus right. felt. like it just kind of passes yeah yeah uh yeah. yeah and i seem to not be holding on to it anymore which is great <laughs> very good <huh? laughs> um yeah that was really soothing um what's in the fur supreme all the different furs um okay. uh, I'll, I'll tell you all the different ones though okay I have so many recipe books I have to go through and figure out. Which <laughs> I imagine you do. It is. So it's um, fur balsam, fur Fraser, 
silver fur, Douglas fur premium, Siberian fur, and French Douglas fur. Ooh, French Douglas fur. That's fancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Thank you. I have some of them, not all of them. Might have to add yeah. to repertoire. Yeah. Um, Fur, furs and spruces are so nice. Like I just, yeah. fur, fur, fur is especially good for activating the heart. Spruces tend to activate more the crown. Okay. And so like you put them together and. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice combo. Yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of leads to a question I popped into the chat to Sam. Mm -hmm. I have to drop early today. I did a, uh, a kinesiology balance yesterday and mm -hmm. uh, the pericardium meridian was off okay. and I was wondering what um it was a it was a release so a, a good thing that happened so we got to like some core fundamental but I was wondering what um essential oil could help like cleanse the the pericardium and also tonify and support you know, the using it in Chinese medicine is not my my expertise, so I uh, it would be a pure guess on my part. Okay. Um, let let I, there's somebody I can actually reach out to and ask. Let me see if I can find find that out for you. Oh, that would be great. All right, yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. All right, great class. Thank you. You're so welcome. Can go ahead, Lolly. Hey, Lolly. Hey. Um, so when we're doing, yeah, that was really lovely. Like everything was, yeah. So that was very needed. Um, the second part that we did with the three centers. So that's basically mm -hmm. doing, um, three brains, right? Three brains. Yep. 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 Okay. So, and that's part of it. So that'll be the balancing part. Now, if, yeah, yeah, well, uh, um, yeah, like, so like whenever you start to do things in in the three brain you're really stimulating intuition as well and that will shift the nervous system especially the potential for transmutation like um it's not necessarily just going to instantaneously transmute something but anytime you start to go more into the intuitive mind it will transmute things mentally emotionally but also even physically and and so um, just starting to stimulate that process, it will continue to work for a while. Yeah. So basically, is that something that you would do? Because there are different parts with the three brains. So would balancing them be something that you would practice more? So, or so still... the, the, the balancing part, like where, you know, you so first the uh, first part of that, where you do the arms and legs, that opens right. up the potential for transmutation, right? Then when you go through and you, you do the sex, the solar, and the brain, so you're kind of activating those centers or at least getting your awareness on them. When, when you put your awareness on all three and um, um, begin to try to harmonize, and harmonize just means you're putting a third of your awareness on the brain, a third mm -hmm. on the solar, a third on the sex. As soon as you start to do that, intuition gets stimulated. And, and so that's really all you're shooting for. You're, the, 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 the tendency of, of those three is we usually are a little bit more dominant in one of those areas. And by having to, to like put your awareness on all three, it kind of overloads the intellect and the intellect at some point just goes, oh, I give up. That's what you're shooting for. Like you're 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 trying to loosen the grip of the intellect so that intuition can do what it does. And so you know, it's it's really just kind of a, a process to stimulate something in your in your um, in the in the mind. And once it's mm -hmm. there, you can kind of just move on. It's like it's not necessarily transmuting it by itself, but it stimulates the part of the mind, excuse me, okay. that that then starts to transmute things, regardless if you have the intention or not. As soon as intuition comes in, it just starts going, we got a clean house. <laughs> like it just starts looking around and just starts resolving things. 
So basically, it's thank you. So basically, it's a process mm -hmm. that's supposed to take me someplace else, like open something up, and once that's open, I don't necessarily right. need to repeat. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. It, it starts. Yeah, because. It, yeah, it just starts cleaning house. Like, you know, if there's mm -hmm. something in your physiology, it's you know because it's tied to the healing process as well for the physical healing process. So it would start addressing things in the physiology. If you had some emotional thing, it just starts like moving you out of that emotional part. If there's some repetitive thought or negative thinking, it starts pruning the stuff in the intellect where it goes, you know what? We've outgrown this. Let's get rid of it. It just starts cleaning house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's so many different practices. So it's a matter of like trying to fit all of them mm -hmm. and kind of find the best way of, of scheduling everything in. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Perfect. And Thank you know, you, you can do then, like, yeah. like here, you could do like one a day, like, you know, you can make it so that it's not a big overwhelming practice. And mm -hmm. after a while, you'll start to go, you know, with my work, uh, a Theracords is probably a big one, you know, and so might be one that you do a lot. But the other ones you can go through and do from time to time. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to hear, like, lay out the foundation, um, uh, you know, because we go deeper on some of these pieces and some of the other classes. But these are just yeah. good everyday bread and butter kind of like you could pick them up and do them without really having to have a reason. You're just kind of working and refining the energy body and your nervous system at the same time. Anytime you work mm -hmm. these aspects, even if you're not working the neurological component, you're always working part of the nervous system along with it. And anytime you upgrade the nervous system, the, um, the ability to perceive, the ability to have higher intuition. And I kind of was doing this because we're going into the intuition uh, weekend next weekend where mm -hmm. we start to develop the 14 aspects of intuition. And so, you know, uh, wanted to lay a little bit of groundwork for people to be prepared for the ones that we're going mm -hmm. into next weekend's class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so and then, a lot of these so, things overlap, yeah. I guess, is what I'm saying. And so mm -hmm. they're, um, they're, they're woven into a lot of different things. And so sometimes mm -hmm. when you're working a, a, like a particular class, you're working some of these aspects, even if it's not said specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and then there was something that you kind of, in the previous class, there was something that you, somebody asked a question about brain injury and there was a whole conversation which made me think about um, in terms of injuries and also in terms of cleaning things as far as basically everything we're talking about, you know, the last couple of days, mm -hmm. if it's the aura, if it's the, the cords. If, so if there is some kind of, a, so it's not a recent trauma, but somebody who had like, you know, brain injury many years ago and it was treated in a basic like, oh, you seem fine, you are fine, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Not thinking that, that could potentially trigger maybe other things later on. Um, so is there something that, I, I don't know, can clean things up in a way, even if you're not really sure well, what for an old, old brain injury? Um, use yeah, basil. Brain injury from like 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Use basil, use uh, sage and use, sage will help reduce uh, brain fatigue and is a neuroprotective. Basil is a cognitive stimulant. And then use things like uh, Roman chamomile or helichrysum. They'll stimulate cerebral spinal fluid circulation and they'll help a little bit with um, uh, refining the nerves a little bit. So even if the person feels fine, you would sure. still do these things just yeah, sure, as sure. a like, backup for just in case? Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially as we get older, using like stimulants, like I say, when I say stimulants, I mean like, you know, in ar aromatherapy, not like coffee, but like, you know, mm -hmm. stimulating processes, the use of things like um, uh, basil and rosemary, you know, for the, for the brain is always a good idea just to keep up cognitive functions. And then um, the use of sage is very neuroprotective for old injuries, for just wear and tear now, uh, inflammation in the body, but also as prevention as you even get older, so. 
And then, so would you do what basil, basil internally and basil then the others? Internal. Yeah, basil internal, uh, the the chamomile and the helichrysum. You could do. I, I would probably do that internal as well. The sage, I would just put on the wrist, you know, like three, four drops mm -hmm. a day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're so welcome. And go ahead, Denise. Hey, Denise. Hi, um, I, I do have a question about the class next week. Um, uh -huh. And um, I guess, if, like you said, I think a lot of things like are held in the body that we just mm -hmm. like, you said, is right. And that's what that class is going to be pretty good at, right? Yeah. Able so, I mean, that's a great, great, like, um, you know, I didn't even think about like talking about it like that because, you know, like sometimes when I'm explaining, I'm like, oh, it does all this stuff. And then I'm like, you guys are reading my mind and hearing that conversation in my head. Right. <laughs> so like kind of what I was just saying to Lolly, like any time you stimulate um, intuition, you're also stimulating the healing process and you're also stimulating the, the, the mechanisms that connect to the soul. Right. And so and how you process information from the soul. So when you stimulate intuition, what starts to happen is it starts to accelerate the processes of healing in the body, but it also will accelerate um, he healing and releasing emotion and also uh, releasing thought. But without you having to re um like revisit things like it's not like you go, oh, I'm doing this thing and I got to bring up that thing from 25 years ago or whatever. It just goes, ah, get out of here. Like it just literally just starts taking garbage out and you just start feeling lighter and lighter, but things in the body, you know, because a lot of, a lot of times these things are being, um, um, they continue because of repetition in the body, right? Repetition in the body, repetition in the emotions and repetition in the mind. And intuition comes and just like breaks up that repetition and it does like a reboot. You know, your body's always going to do repetition, but why keep doing things from so long ago? So it will kind of release those processes, stimulate healing processes, and then you'll be, you'll be maintaining something that's like been upgraded. And so the idea of healing something from the past, be it physical, emotional, mental, is that it's it's literally like cleaning out the garage or just you know taking stuff to Salvation Army or whatever. It just starts kicking things out without having to go. Let's focus on uh, like an old trauma or something. You're just stimulating these um, intuitive processes, and then intuition does all the heavy lifting. Yeah, it's it's, it's hard to. Um, like for the general public, it would be very hard to get them to do that because they don't really have any sort of foundation for going into the intuitive state, right? So for a while, what you do is you have to keep stimulating and and working the foundation for being able to even have the potential to going into the intuitive state. So when you don't have that potential, then you have to really focus on symptom-oriented approaches. And it, with, with that, then you kind of graduate into the, to other things, eventually working your way up into the intuitive state. But he, here with everything that we've been doing, even if somebody is, is relatively new, you've had enough foundation so that when we start doing these intuitive processes, boom, you'll just start, um, uh, the body will just hit the ground running. I mean, it's, it's. Um, I, I think, you know, in all the years that I used to even do it in healing, I think in, in like 30 years, there was only like one or two people that had a difficulty with it when we laid the groundwork. And, um, uh, and for them, they were just so stuck in the head that they they had a hard time breaking out of it. And and like there was like a mental illness there, like it was you know substantial. So it just it it just took longer. It, it it's not that it didn't happen; it just took longer. And so, um, 
you know, we'll go, we'll be going through and developing each piece. Like if you take intuition and go, okay, what is intuition? Because that's a very general term. We break it down into these 14 functional pieces. And then we have like a little recipe book and you look up, okay, what issue do I have? Like, even if you say, okay, I have a respiratory issue, you know, you can go and say, okay, the intuitional piece that I need for a respiratory function is here. And then if you go, okay, the, the piece that I need for digestive issues, ah, it's here. Like, so you can actually pull the piece of intuition that you that you need to heal a particular issue, and then you just work it. And um, so you'll develop those pieces, but then you'll you'll um, be applying them to specific conditions. So, or sp specific kinds of conditions, I should say, so that you can accelerate the healing process. Because a, a lot of what slows down the healing process is intellect. Like we, you know, it's yep. literally what psychosomatic means is, the mind then affects the somatic part of the nervous system. Intellect is hit the body and, you know, be at frustration or stress, or we want it to go a particular way, or we think a certain thing should happen. It just slows down all the healing processes. So this just opens up all the pathways so that things can happen and things can move. It just feels like it might be my next step. I, I'm yeah. very interested in that and the seven rays. Um, yeah. I didn't know how close the seven rays was going to be to this. It, it will be in June, but but um, the seven rays will probably teach again, like in the fall. Like, so okay. we'll do June and we'll do the fall. And, and the classes I, are always up, so you can always do it, um, you know, later. But, yeah. But I, I, I wouldn't, like, if I miss the seven rays this time, um, I don't, it, it doesn't build like it has, it's a prerequisite to get to no. the second. Okay. No. That, that's encouraging. It takes yeah. off some of the pressure. But yeah. I have a couple of head injuries. And I just really feel like between that and looking kind of like at a life review, it kind of feels like this intuition might be a really good. Intuition is an amazing class. Like I've been waiting to teach this class for a very long time. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. You so answered welcome. my question. And I'm enjoying this class very much. Oh, Thank good. You. Good, good. Would Greg repeat what he said about helichrysum and which chamomile? Ro Roman chamomile. Um, they help to stimulate cerebral spinal fluid circulation, and they'll help with um, helping to kind of refine the nerves, like from um, brain injury or strokes or things like that. Yeah. So, okay, so we're on page 10, or no, page 11, and we're doing organs of blood purification. So this really helps to um, uh, refine and cultivate higher levels of emotion, helps to refine the ego, and um, helps us to be under more guidance of our higher faculties that, rather than our lower primal drives. You know, pr primal... Primal isn't just like how we think of like primal or primitive, like uh, like of earth, but primal can also mean like our first experiences, like when you're like a child or a baby, a lot of times what happens, be it that they're good or bad, is we start trying to duplicate them or relive them, right? So some of our drives are based on drives that are things that happen to us when we're very, very little. And we just go, this is the way the world is. And you keep trying to duplicate what it is. So refining it is not just this primal part of like uh, animalistic kind of human thing. It is um, refining our first experiences so that we can grow out of the negative things and even positive things, sometimes we outgrow those as well, you know. Again, kind of kind of tied to some of the auric work that we do. And in, in the functions, like, you know, we have auric structure, auric function. Um, it's associated with blood three, 
like the the third part of the functions is refining like the patterns and like the more primal or primitive experiences that we had which are like our first experiences you know so anyway okay so you're going to use again artemisia mugwort or chakra root cleanser And begin inhaling with your awareness on the lungs. I mean, I'm going to keep talking while you're inhaling. You think about like the intuition thing. How many times do you have something where you're trying to figure out what it is, what pattern, what feeling, this, this tendency that keeps happening in your world or in your life? You try to figure it out so you can resolve it. You know something's there, but you don't know how to uh, address it. Intuition is what actually addresses that. Intuition is what perceives it and then what heals it. I used to refer to the intuitive um, part with my clients as the, this is the get out of jail free card. You know, because we're held like captive by the things from our past. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths with our awareness on the lungs. Now move to your liver, that area below your ribs on the right-hand side of your body. And then your gallbladder. So if you go to your center line, go a couple inches off to the right, still below the ribs. This area will impact the gallbladder. down to your kidneys. And then your spleen on the right hand side, or excuse me, on the left hand side below the ribs.
And then just be still. Pause and be still. Let's do that again. Your awareness is on the lungs. You're on the lungs, you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Move to the liver. Right hand side of the body below the ribs. And then two inches from your center line, your midline, below the ribs, to the right. Two inches from your midline to the right, below the ribs. And then your kidneys.
long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the kidneys. And then the spleen on the left-hand side below your ribs. Just pause and let go. Just let that incubate for a moment. In that film. I like that we're at that stage where your eyes don't even open. I hear you're reading the vibration of a few areas, the autonomic nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and the organs themselves. So ANS support or single oils, uh, anise, eucalyptus McCarthy, let's see your kebaba, red gum eucalyptus, rosemary, rosemary verbenin, tarragon, Okay, and front solar plexus, so that area below your ribs. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Wind. Your back solar plexus.
That's the mid back area, your back solar plexus. No, let go for a second. We're going to do the abdominal cavity. So basically the area from below your ribs down to your belly button area, right? If you were to draw a tic-tac-toe on your abdomen, right, these would be the nine quadrants. So upper left, upper middle, upper right, middle left, middle, middle, middle right. Lower left, lower middle, lower right. We want to explore each one of these. So I'm going to kind of guide us through it. So again, if you just kind of visualize like a tic-tac-toe on your area, it doesn't necessarily mean like you have to, oh, I have to stick within this quadrant. You're wanting just to establish like a search grid of working these different parts of the abdominal cavity, right? So begin inhaling. Let's start with your awareness on the right upper quadrant. So that's kind of in the liver. You're taking long, slow, deep breaths on that right upper quadrant. Now move to the upper middle quadrant. And then the upper left quadrant. And this one on you. Kind of knocking you out, yeah. A lot of tension gets out. Hey, just let that go for a moment. Okay, so now we're doing the middle row, but on the right. So middle right quadrant. the middle, middle quadrant.
and then the middle left quadrant. and then let go. Now, start again, inhaling, lower right quadrant. Lower middle quadrant. Lower left quadrant. Okay, be still for a moment. Now I have a question for you. Did you have a quadrant that really like rocked your world? Like you're like kind of going along and all of a sudden, like, you know, you started yawning really bad or you almost fell asleep, started dropping the bottle. That's an area for you to work. There can be pockets of tension within the body or pockets of where the nerves aren't functioning right. And this is both a treatment and a way to go through and search your gut to see where your, your problem spots are. So you're doing therapy, but at the same time, you're like, ugh, that middle right quadrant, ugh, what is going on there, right? So it's a way for you to fine tune how to treat this area, but also even the searching is a treatment unto itself, right? So let's go through and we're going to do it again. So upper right. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. upper middle quadrant.
upper left quadrant. See where on the upper left, just let go. Now, middle right quadrant, begin inhaling on that. middle, middle quadrant. Middle left quadrant. And then just be still. Lower break quadrant. Lower middle quadrant.
lower left quadrant. How's this feeling or got? Middle quadrant. <laughs> Just be still for a moment. And just for fun, let's do the front back solar plexus again, just to see what, after working those quadrants, what that feels like. Your awareness is on the front solar plexus. So below your ribs, on the upper abdomen, you're taking long, slow, deep breaths on the solar plexus. And then move to the back solar plexus, the mid-back area, below your shoulder blades. And just pause and be still. Notice how your body feels, your emotions, your mind. So this last piece, we're just going to slide right into the last piece with the number eight. Um, this is just meant to kind of be a real super general. We're not going to all the chakras, but just a way to flesh out things from the, the chakras and energy centers, right? And so um, we'll just do a simple light version of this so you can have a taste of it. We go a bit deeper. There is a free chakra class. And then there's chakra class that's, you know, a real deep dive. But, um, you know, we just thought we'd touch on it. Uh, anyway. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to find arnica or poplar, rosewood, sandalwood, the chakra blend itself, or any of the individual chakras. Whichever one you want to use. So first you're practicing body awareness.
you're feeling your body, where do you feel something? And just start breathing into it. Okay, now let that go. Go to the area above your left ear, the left side of your head above the left ear. Your awareness is there. Take some nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Now go to the right side of your head above the ear. Your awareness is over there. And you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Now let that go. Go to the area between your eyebrows, the Ajna. You're inhaling with your awareness on the Ajna. And then move your awareness to the back head, opposite the Ajna on the back head.
and just let go. Just let go. Now this part is gonna flush the chakras. So you're using the same oil. Your awareness is on the back heart. Your awareness is on the navel. And then your awareness is on the crown, the top of the head. And then be still. Just be still. Let's do that one again. Your awareness is on the back heart. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the back heart. the navel,
and then the crown. And then just pause and let go. Now you're going to practice brain awareness. Your awareness is on your brain, either the whole brain or if there's a spot that jumps out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it does have a different oil. My apologies. Dark patchouli, patchouli, myrrh, frankincense, gardaldo, lemon verbena, frank and myrrh, free wiseman. Yeah. Any version of that. And so brain awareness, yeah, things are catching up. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the brain. Now go to the left side of your head above the ear. You're inhaling with your awareness on the left side of your head above the ear. Move to the right side of your head.
Now go to the Ajna, the area between the eyebrows. Now go to the back of the head. And then be still. I would say probably check your temperature because you're cooked. <laughs> Just notice how your body feels, your emotions, your mind, your thoughts. And so let's go ahead and share some questions and Go ahead, Barbara. Hey, Miss Barbara. Hey there. Thank you for this. When we did the nine quadrants, the lower left was the zinger for me. I kind of thought it would be. And I'm wondering, is that perhaps related to the psoas muscle as opposed to an organ? Could, yeah, it could be the psoas. could be part of the abdominal area. And it's also um, could be an issue in the descending colon. But um, if you have a little bit of like back issue or something, it's probably so as. Yeah. Oh, my hip is at the point I am having trouble falling asleep and the um, the vein outside the leg is inflamed and it's so I don't know if that's so as issue or something else. It but... could be. So so what, what's happening like the vein on the outside or the inside of the leg? The outside. I've had that before. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, it seems to come from the low back. But the last few nights, I haven't been able to get comfortable in that hip to fall asleep. Try putting some like German chamomile on that. Okay. Yeah, like on the hip and the like the like the butt cheek and the the low back area. Just like kind of follow it down a little bit. Okay, I've tried other things, but not that. I'll try that yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then let me know if that doesn't resolve. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. And go ahead, Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Greg. A um, couple questions on the on the oils that we used. Mm -hmm. um, the lemon verbena. My experience of that was that it calms, calmed my physiology. Mm -hmm. And it was opening me to energy spirit. And that's mm. how that's kind of the words that I would use. Mm -hmm. um, if you were going to put lemon verbena and what it does in 25 words or less, what would you say? Um, um doesn't count, does it? No, it doesn't um, count. Nope. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Any, anything that has a lemon scent mm -hmm. usually has a, like a soothing or relaxing quality to it. So lemon verbena would definitely be in that vein. The, the big thing that uh, lemon verbena does, I mean, it's kind of good for the liver and it's good for a few things. It's really good for the endocrine system. Like it has a um, overall like tonic effect on all the glands and helps to regulate uh, endocrine function. And so um, 
if I would say like it had one big thing that it did, it's endocrine function. Okay. You know, it, it, it can be used for other things as well, but it, it that's what it really does. Like it shines in that area substantially. And it works different than like frankincense and myrrh and patchouli. Like they will jumpstart the glands where lemon verbena like tones it and helps everything like regulate. So if a gland mm -hmm. is is a out of balance and is underperforming or overperforming, it will help to regulate all those like little hiccup areas. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 So it, it, like you said, very good, very soothing. And if you think about like even deeper, a lot of what our thoughts are, you know, especially our lower thoughts, they're um, the endocrine system functioning through the brain or the nervous system. And, and so it can even have an impact on like critical thinking and lower mental activities. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm right there with you. Um, uh, very soothing, you know, like 20, 20 years ago, it was, I mean, it's, it's expensive now, but like 20 years ago, it was crazy expensive. And I used to always just buy a little tiny bit. And I was just like, because I mean, it just does some magical thing that I just, ugh. and so, um, yeah, I've, I've always kind of kept that around. Yeah. Okay. Um, stagnation. Mm -hmm. How how did stagnation get named a stagnation? Because to me, it seems to be my experience was it was breaking up stagnation, breaking up blockages. Yeah, that's yeah, it's breaking up the stagnation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, sh I guess I should have called it anti-stagnation. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stagnation terminator. There we go. That's what I'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> um and as and about next weekend's class it sounds like what we have here is the engineering approach to intuition i'm sure i'll yes get right along with that yes i think robert will almost probably... like an like the intellectual approach to intuition kind yeah, there you go. Of. like i was kind of joking about that around here i was like yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know it's nice to be able to develop each piece because they'll they'll combine to be something bigger but a lot of times when you're just trying to stimulate some big thing, you know, you might stimulate or have like decent ability in a couple areas. So that's the part that you lean on. But here we're just going to systematically and not just develop them. We're going to develop them by treating, you know, how we did the um, auric programming and there was the 49, um, you know, things to approach. Right the um, this is going to use that same mapping so that same you know 49 things but there's going to be the intuitive component associated with each one so they're going to like marry with each other okay like, so you'll work the physical part and then you can work the the part where intuition comes in and accelerates the healing of the thing that you just um addressed with the auric programming okay yeah excellent well i'm yeah. looking forward to it yeah it, it, the the best that um you know i was trying to explain it to one of my friends and i was like if if you were to like try to systematically come up with like what happens in ceremonial healing this is the closest like i think i could get to it where you you kind of hit the org programming and then you hit the intuitive part and then let intuition and your physiology just do the dance. And um, yeah, it's, I, I did it with Samantha, like for, you know, we did the org programming for her sinuses and, you know, they were good. And then we did um, the, the intuitive part of it. And man, it like, it more than doubled the efficiency, right? Oh, yeah. And then it lasted way longer. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's going to be interesting. Great. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Good. Beyond words, amazing. Oh, good. Thank you. 
destagnate. <laughs> destagnate. There you go. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to a nation of stags. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Any good oil for a salt bath tonight? Well, you just moved a bunch of energy and everything. I'd do something that's like kind of soothing and cleansing. Uh, Marjoram would be good. Uh, hyssop could be good. Uh, frankincense, chocolate root cleanser. Um, we're on a little bit of a Paracelsus kick around here. I don't know. That, that's always like uh, if you happen to have that or a bit of wormwood or something. I don't know. When I was doing the stagnation earlier, I was like, I think I need to do a stagnation. Yeah, stagnation's now. pretty fancy. But, I mean, stagnation's nice because it's a good workhorse and it's it has, I don't know, fancy qualities, but it's not, you know, super expensive or anything, you know. So. Um, just a quick question. What is the difference between rosemary and basil for the brain? Rosemary increases circulation. Basil is a, a mental stimulant or cognitive stimulant. Basil also reduces the um, uh, stress in the brain, like mental mental stress. Not not so much physical stress, but mental stress. Or rosemary increases blood flow. I'm cooked. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you for a great class. I, I yeah. don't know. I kind of feel like now you can see another thank you for a great weekend. Oh, um, I guess because I have a little bit of time and I still have you guys here um, for the new people. I just never did my little talk through. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. So let me do a little share screen here. This will also be in in the recording so the information i'm just going to share here is also going to be in the recording so so you'll have access to that but i wanted to give you some little things about the website that you may or may not know so in our blog it's a great place to find little references to things greg has already taught in the past so we have put every single thing Greg has done in our weekly newsletter into the blog. And we divide it into the different categories. So properties of oils is our daily dose. So it goes into specifics that Greg has told us about as far as oils go. I've created an everything daily dose um, properties of essential oils. So it's a list of the different oils that Greg has done a deep dive on. It's a great reference. I absolutely go to this every week and I love it. And I do have it as the very first blog post right now. And so if you're kind of wondering about different oil specifically, um, that's a great place to go. The other thing I want to just kind of point out is the support page. If you click right on support, Scroll down just a little bit. It says to see specific student support. Again, this is in the recording. It has the links as well um, that you'll get on Monday. Uh -huh. Oh, just a sec. Let me pause. Just a sec. I have to do it this way. All right. Let me get back to share. I'm sure. Did it done another way? But I Let's do it this way. Okay. So our number one thing I want to just tell you, our Monday Plant Prono Weekly Newsletter, it is the go-to for all the info for what's going on with Plant Prana. Greg also puts in a protocol every week. He's been doing a couple different ones. We've been doing Plant Prana Technique. We've been doing the RX Programming he has clinical corner. He has the daily dose. Greg gives so much good information. It also has a list of the new new products that we've put out the week, new blogs that have come out that week, and new videos and video clips that have been made that week. So it's kind of a just our way of like saying, here's what happened this week. Here's what's going on this week and following. And it's just a great kind of thing to look at. And 
We have our practice sessions on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday is the Q&A, and it is a great time to come with questions. Anything goes for you, clients, family, whatever, things like that. And then the Wednesday, Greg does two Astara practices, and then he goes into the special study group for whatever class was taught the previous weekend. So this weekend's class, it has a special study group on Wednesday, and we will be sending that link out on Wednesday. I try to send them out close to the time that we'll actually be doing the practices. Social media, the number one I wanna show you, we are on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We're, we are getting a little more up on our Pinterest just for those visual visual people and for me and so but the youtube channel is great if you look at our youtube channel i've kind of updated it as well if you haven't gone in the last week i've put um different categories now as you scroll down so the popular videos a couple different playlists are on here so you can see our most popular playlists and then the number one thing is if you have a question about anything, whether it's an oil, whether it's about digestion, I don't know. This one is, let's say chakra, because we just talked about chakras. Here's a bunch of different like shorts, uh, things that Greg has talked about, specific chakra oils or chakras. And so it's a little search button in our YouTube. We have 1500 videos on our YouTube. It is a fantastic way to learn and find more information. And with that, I'm going to stop. There's so much I could keep talking about, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew some different options that are available to you guys. Good. Yeah. And if you have questions, you can always email us and all that good stuff. So, okay, if we have no more questions, I guess. All right. Oh, yeah, I sure will. Um, and my upper, middle, and left quadrants are achy. What do I do? More ANS? Yeah, I would do more ANS. Um, I'd even take a few drops of ANS internally. I didn't feel anything yeah. until we did the protocol. Yeah. yeah. Something's moving. Sometimes it's actually also... Um, the muscle, like the skeletal muscle. And so you might even want to rub a little bit of something antispasmodic on topically. Like, you know, ANS would work, but like marjoram or, you know, a little something that can break up the spasm. Achy kind of tells me that it might be more the muscle than anything. Because you don't really have feeling in the Mm, the smooth muscle like in the, in the digestive tract you know you could go in and cut something and you wouldn't even feel it but the muscle like your abdominal muscles that you will feel so there might be some little spasm uh trigger point activity in that area so rub, rub something on topically go ahead peggy hi i'm late hey. You all, but um, asking for a friend, but really, really, really painful nerve damage from shingles, and it's on his hand, so he can't really. Um, pe peppermint can be be good for that, but uh, ravensara is also good for the, the shingles are gone, and you just have the leftover pain. Yes. So I would either say peppermint or nerve help would be one of the two things that I would use for that. Nerve help is one of we have. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. We're going to try it. Thank you. Just rub it on topically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you might want to put like, especially if it's peppermint, you might want to put a little lotion or massage oil and rub it on the area, but it, it should help. Yeah. He's got that. So, okay. oh, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Y'all have a great, thank you for the pieces of class I got to really enjoy and I'll be doing it online. Okay. <laughs> Have a great week. Thank you. Okay, you guys. Well, thanks for hanging out this weekend. And remember, Wednesday night we have the study group, and Tuesday we have Q and A. And next weekend is the intuition class. So uh, hopefully, I see you at one of those, or all of them, or whatever works for you.
Take care.